Hello everybody and welcome to episode 1 of the Zero to Hero Arena Grind. Now this is something that's kind of been anticipated since episode 1 of the Zero to Hero series, but um, you know, now I believe is a good as time as any to finally start on our arena grind. I mean, we're at a point where we pretty much have access to a majority of the runes in the game. We have enchantment gems. We're about to start um, farming a bunch of artifacts, and then we're even going to start getting grindstones soon. I mean, and, and I mean grindstones at a consistent rate, right? We're going to start doing R5 pretty soon. So I was like, it doesn't hurt to kind of just get started a little bit on arena and start climbing the ranks to see how high we can go, right? See how well your boy can adapt to the arena so <laughs> um i want to show you kind of what i've been working on and what you know my thought process is right because i want to take things step by step and um you know i think it's time we start the first step so let's go to the arena i want to show you guys something so of course the most important thing to me at the moment is having an arena defense that you know doesn't lose like crazy right because i don't care how many battles i win if by tomorrow you know, I've been revenged, attacked, or whatever, like a billion and a half times, I'm just going to end up back to where I started. So why not create a defense that, you know, is a bit annoying to face off against? Now, I know some of you are judging me heavy, but I'm going to show you something. First off, this is what I have in my uh, storage, so if you could find me a team <laughs> to use, you know, by all means, go ahead. But I was looking at all these units, and I know there are units like Triana, or all those that I could use, but, um... I figured that this team was very, very annoying. So let me explain the team. First things first, obviously they're not leveled up all the way. Level 10, 35, level 10. They can be leveled up more, but on top of that, you'll notice that they don't have all their runes. The reason that that is, is because I want to make sure that they have the runes that they need. I mean, you look at Riley, you know, she has um, runes that fit her, right? And runes that make her fast, super tanky, and resistant. I mean... Just off of what she has alone, it's like you see 100 bonus speed. This is not grinded. I think she could use more enchantment gems like, uh, where is it? Well, she could be faster with grinds. Um, enchantment gems would make her tank here. I mean, you see the resistance, 92% resistance. That's going to be annoying. And on violent will nonetheless. So that and artifacts that will reduce damage incoming and all that. I mean, she's going to be very, very annoying. Also, she's going to need skill ups, but again, just trying to get the runes on her. Once we get grinds, I can imagine her being around 120 speed very, very easily. Uh, she's going to be, when she's max level as well, she's going to have way over 1,000 defense. She's going to have upwards of 18, 19,000 bonus HP. She's going to be tanky. She's going to be very, very hard to kill, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so let's start explaining off some of these units with morris um i think morris was a great choice because if you know morris um you know that he's a very annoying unit but for those of you who don't know let me explain him real quick so a skill one um make you know allows him to roll two dice to attack the enemy target two times and he grants effects according to the numbers that he gets on those dice something that i should clarify for those of you who don't know how the dice magicians work the numbers work according to the number on each dice, not the sum of the two dice. So if you get, you'll see that there are, the effects are based off getting numbers 4, 5, and 6. If you get a 4 um, as a dice roll, you'll place the unrecoverable effect. If you get a 5, you'll place defense uh, decrease. And then number 6, you'll increase the chances of landing a glancing hit, right, on the enemy. If you land a 1 and a 3, the sum of it equals 4, but you will not land the unrecoverable one of the dice has to have a four so for example if you roll your dice and you get a four and a five you'll place unrecoverable and defense break on the enemy if you land a one and a three you won't do anything to the enemy other than attack them i feel like i should state that but this skill one is obviously going to be good unrecoverable defense break and then glancing hits are always going to be good skill two um, he rolls a dice and stuns the enemy for one turn if the sum of the numbers is greater than seven or he decreases the attack speed for two turns if the sum is less than seven. He also gains another turn if the numbers on the dice are the same number every three turns. So I'll, obviously I'll, I'll have to skill this up as much as I can. But stunning or attack speed slowing is obviously going to be good as well. But the reason obviously why I chose him is due to his passive. Where every single turn he rolls two dice to recover his HP. And he revives all dead allies if you get the same number. The larger the sum of the dice, the more HP you recover and the more HP the revived allies will have. The smaller the sum of the dice, the larger the increase 
and the revived allies attack bar. So when you think about it, if when he starts his turn and let's say him and Riley are the only ones alive, Cocky and Bulwark are dead. It's just if he lands a one and a three on his dice, he'll revive or not. He won't revive. Let's say he uh, he lands a one and a one. My bad. If he lands two dice or he, if he rolls two of his dice and they both get ones, they'll revive maybe not with not so much HP, but they'll have dang near full attack bars allowing them to move, which, you know, that's going to be really good. And if he lands two sixes, they'll be revived with pretty much full HP, I, I would assume. So we have a reviver here and you should see how often he's rolling his dice. Actually, I, I will show them in a, in a quick fight, but um, very annoying unit. Plus you get the accuracy lead. So we can land more stuff like the skill 2s and skill 1s. Um, my plan is to get him on Violent Will. Obviously, these are the runes I have him on, on him so far. I would like to bring some enchantment gems to them, regardless if they have the stats that I want. Even if it means increasing the speed of this by a bit, or the resistance by a bit. I'll probably try and increase the speed, probably get it from 5 to 8 if I can get an uh, enchantment gem for it. For this one... Um, change out that flat defense for a defense percent that or yeah or increase the resistance for this one increase the resistance probably either keep it resistance or change it to HP percent this one is fine I suppose this one is fine and I just need a will rune for slot 4 I don't care if it's a defense or HP but um yeah so he's on his way I mean he needs work obviously but I thought I, I might as well show you guys kind of what I'm aiming for for this guy. Next is Bulwark. Um, I can't tell you, every time I face off against the Bulwark, they're so annoying, but Bulwark is so fun. So the way Bulwark works is with his skill one, he is able to steal a beneficial effect, and obviously that means he's applying it to himself. So if he attacks an enemy with an immunity effect on them, he could steal it and place it on himself. Really fun, which is why I'm probably placing him on revenge. I might remove this one. Oh, no, no, no. Is it? Actually, no, all these kind of fit him. Um, but I'm placing him on Revenge Shield Will, if I can get him that. Um, will runes, obviously, to prevent him from being stunned, at least from the first turn. Shield runes to help give our allies more uh, survivability. And then Revenge, so every once in a while, if he is attacked, imagine getting attacked or imagine attacking my bulwark and then it's just like he revenge procs and steals your attack buff or your endure or something like that it's just it's gonna be really fun but um like most of the lightning emperors he has the learn knowledge passive where he gains knowledge by the number of granted beneficial effects when you or an enemy is granted with a beneficial effect in addition gains one knowledge if you have two or fewer knowledge at the start of your turn you could have up to five knowledge now the crazy thing about Bulwark is his third skill called Forbidden Galder, um, where he decreases the current HP of the enemy target, bosses excluded, by 10% for every knowledge you have. If you have 5 knowledge, decreases the target's max HP by 50% instead. So that's a lot. And the cool thing about the skill 3 is that it doesn't have a cooldown, and on top of that, after he uses this, he heals all allies by the decreased amount of HP. So let's say you do this to O'Reilly and you decrease Riley's HP by 50%. Assuming Riley had 30,000 HP exactly, you're going to heal all allies for 15,000 HP, which is really nice. So he also is healing on top of Riley, right? Um, and you could use this whenever you at least have one knowledge. So he could be annoying. So he's going to be really cool um, to use. And I don't, he's not going to need skill ups. So that's a, that's a plus, right? Riley should be self-explanatory. I mean, healing, immunity, cleansing, all that stuff. And I've already shown you her runes and her resistance and all that. Violent will. I mean, again, all she needs is grinds and she's going to go crazy. Cocky. I chose Cocky because I feel like we still need a damage dealer. And Cocky was the one I preferred because it's like I can make him fast. I can make him um, with a lot of attack. And thanks to his passive right here where he increases his defense by 20% of his attack power with full grinds and artifacts and everything. It's just like, he's going to be really tanky. He's going to be hard to kill and he's going to hit hard back. And with having the team that we have with a bunch of revivers and healers, my God, I mean, I think my defense is going to be pretty annoying. So, um, of course they don't have all the runes that they should. 
So I just kind of want to show off uh, Morris a little bit, just to show you just how insane his turn manip, um, his passive is, because you'll see that thing proc like a billion and a half times. I know this is an easy arena defense, but my runes aren't built exactly, so you know. So let's just do this skill one. So boom, he does that. Takes a turn. Takes a turn. Takes a turn. <laughs> takes a turn. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> like, you can't tell me within that time he's not going to be able to take enough turns to revive an ally. Jesus Christ, man. And then decrease HP. And then we heal ourselves by that amount. So, yeah, Morris is going to be insane. <laughs> I mean, you want to build him on Violent Rune. So... That's kind of what we're working on. Over the course of the next few days, I'm going to be working on these units on the side, as well as working on the main thing for the Zero to Hero count. But I think this is going to be a very fun introduction to the arena grind. I mean, I think I got a pretty decent team. If you guys have some suggestions, um, I'll show you again my arena, my, my monster storage one more time. I, know, I was thinking about using the Puppeteer, but I was trying to minimize the amount of Nat 5s I'm using at the moment. But, um there are my units also I should show you these I, I have some units sitting here so I have the samurai horse I was thinking of using Omduat but I don't know black tea bunny was also something I was thinking about but um you if you if you can come up with a better defense or, or arena team um you by all means go ahead and I'll, I'll definitely take a look at it but I think I got something good going on here but for now this is kind of what this video is about is just an introduction to this showing you what I'm working on by the next video I'd like to have everyone ruined and everyone six starred and probably some grindstones in them I mean I just want to give you guys an update that's going to show progress towards building a, a defense team that's just going to be very hard to kill so with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one peace